by Kate Summer Spencer, not Summer. Next. Hello, my sweet angels. It's your girl Jay, and today I am here with part three of my October wrap up. I read a total of 29 books in October. I talked about the first 10 books that I read back in the middle of October because it was like October 11th and I had already read 10 books so I was like mm, let's make this easier on myself and then I procrastinated filming part two and part three. So part two is the next eight books and then this is the final eight books for a total of 29. So without further ado let us get started. The first book I'm going to talk about is Mistress of Lies by K.M. Enright. I gave this one a five out of five stars. I really really loved it. This this one follows Sean LeClaire. She is the daughter of a disgraced blood worker and she has just committed patricide. She has spent many years under the pseudonym Sparrow creating a network of spies in order to ensure that her brother, who is an unblooded, remains protected. Shan unexpectedly meets a bastard named Samuel Hutchinson who has a very strange power and she convinces him to help her with her cause. This book reminds me so much of In the Ravenous Dark by A.M. Strickland, which was my favorite book of 2021. So when I heard about this one, I was like, mm, that sounds like it's going to be right up my alley. And I was not wrong. There is just something about conniving secretive characters that play games with literally everybody that just gets me going. I did not trust a single one of these characters, but I was so invested in finding out what was going to happen next. We get points of views from both Shan and Samuel, which I do think really helped push the story along, but I do wish that we had gotten a couple point of views from Isaac as well. I think that the power that Samuel had was absolutely fascinating. I wanted to know everything about it. I also think that his character development was really well done and fun to watch. I really liked how he had to struggle with his newfound power and what that meant for the world. There is also a three-way polyamorous relationship in this that I absolutely ate up. I think that the magic system in this with the blood magic was so interesting and I really liked this take on vampires. Like I said, there is just so much politics and scheming in this. I was invested right from the very first chapter. All in all, I support women's wrongs and I cannot wait for the second book in this series. I will definitely be picking it up. This was a five out of five for me. Next up, I read Spin of Fate by A.A. A. Vora, and this one I gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I don't know if I'm just not smart enough for this book, but I found it a little bit confusing. This world is run by Tyrannic Law, which is a magical force that separates the morally good from the morally bad. Those who live in the upper realms basically live a life of a luxury. Those who live in the lower realms are able to commit themselves to a life of being morally good which will cause their souls to turn light and give them access to the upper realms. So when Ina ascends to the upper realms, she wants nothing more than to go back to the lower realms in order to be reunited with her mother. So she decides to join the Balancers, which is a rebel cause, and she's hoping that when she joins, her soul will be tarnished enough to allow her to descend back down. So this started off very slow, and it did take quite a while for me to become invested in the story. I think that it is such a complex system that it was quite confusing for a lot of the story. I do think that the spinning of the souls was really intriguing, and I did want to know more about that. I did think that the Four Realms was very interesting. I also really enjoyed the magical beasts in this. I must admit that I did find myself growing bored for the majority of the story, but then something would happen that would pique my interest, which made me keep reading the book. There are a lot of themes in this that are focusing on religion and right versus wrong, which did grow a little bit repetitive by the end. Like I said previously, I do think that the book was a tad confusing, but as you kept reading, it did become a little bit more manageable. This is told in three point of views between Ina, Maisonel, and Arenel. All of these characters are morally gray and I can't really say that I connected with any of them. 
or ended up rooting for any of them, but I was invested enough to want to know what was going to happen with them. I want to say that I'm interested in the second book in this series, but I don't think that I'm going to go out of my way trying to find the next book in the series, but overall I thought it was okay, albeit a little bit confusing. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book that I have is Losing Leah by Tiffany King. This one I gave a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I actually read this one as part of my blind date with a book series on my channel that I started like four years ago and never finished and this was one of the books. So once I actually edit that vlog I will have that up on my channel so spoiler alert this was the book but I knew that literally from the very first page so you know it is what it is. This basically follows twins Leah and Mia. Leah's entire world is changed once she is taken. She is now being held in a basement with a woman who tells her to call her mother. She must ensure that she is the perfect daughter or or else she will be abused. Ten years later, after Leah is taken, Mia is convinced she is dead. She is finding it very hard to fit in with her family, who has never quite recovered from Leah's disappearance. Then she starts having insane headaches and she starts to see a dark shadow that is following her around. So I like this book for the most part, although I do think it was quite predictable and I was able to call a lot of the plot twists. It did keep me entertained enough that I wanted to keep reading. We do get dual point of view between Mia and Leah. I can't say I particularly cared for Mia's chapters. I was solely invested in Leah's chapters and her time in the basement. I just wanted the entire book to be Leah's perspective. I just found her to be a lot more interesting than Mia and I was definitely more invested in her side of the story rather than Mia's. I personally didn't find the ending to be very satisfying. I was left with a lot of unanswered questions which is why I only gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars which now that I'm thinking about it is probably high. I did have a lot of fun reading it so my rating is based off of the vibes but it was still an entertaining read, so 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next, I read One Last Summer. This is by Kate Spencer, and I gave this one a 4 out of 5 stars. This one follows Clara Millen, who is married to her job. She is completely burnt out, so her boss decides that she is going to go on a little bit of a leave. This allows her to go to the annual reunion at her old summer camp with her childhood friends that she has been missing for several years now because of her job. When she and her friends arrive at Pine Lakes, the owners actually tell them them that they are going to be selling the camp and this is their final year. So Clara and her friends decide that they are going to relive all of their memories that they've shared together at the camp before it is sold and it's kind of the story of that. This was a really fun read. I do think it was very predictable, but I had a really fun time reading it nonetheless. I actually listened to it on audiobook and I think that the narrators did an incredible job bringing these characters to life. This is actually a second chance romance between Clara and her childhood friend Max. She never acted on her feelings because as children they had a very frenemy competitive relationship going on. I really like the banter between these two. I think that they had very good chemistry and I did really like them together. It was really cute watching them grow closer together after they had spent so long apart from one another. I do think that there was a lot of drama that could have definitely been resolved very quickly if Clara had just had a couple of conversations with people, but thankfully it was all resolved in the end. I do think that I should have waited to read this for the summertime because I think it would be the perfect summer read, but I really enjoyed it. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Next up I read Ever the Hunted by Erin Summerhill and I gave this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows 17 year old Britta who spends most of her time helping her bounty hunter father hunt criminals. Unfortunately her father ends up being murdered and so Britta is unable to claim his land or her inheritance. When she is caught by the royal guards for poaching on the king's land she is offered a trade, her life for the life of her father's murderer. But the problem is the alleged killer is her childhood friend, first love, and father's apprentice Cohen McKay. This was a very slow paced read, but it did have very interesting world building. I really liked learning about the two kingdoms and why they were at odds with each other. I do think that the book started to drag quite a bit in the middle, but it did pick up in the end, although it was quite predictable. A lot of this book is just traveling from one place to another, which did allow for the reader to learn quite a bit about the backstory of each character. 
I do think that Britta was a likable character and I am intrigued to see where the story goes from this first book. I did like Cohen. I think that he was a fun love interest. I really liked watching Britta and him grow closer together and watching Britta have to learn to trust him again after he had left to go work for the king. The relationship grows quite a bit as they're traveling from place to place but I do think that it was satisfying in the end. We are left on quite the cliffhanger so I am intrigued to see where the story goes in the second book. Overall I give it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Next up I read The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. This is the prequel to The Hunger Games trilogy. I really enjoyed this. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. I had held off reading this for so long because I was convinced that you know everybody hated this book so I was also not going to love it as much as I was hoping but I would like to report that I actually did quite enjoy it. I will say that I went to go see the movie in theaters and that was what kind of pushed me to read it although it still took me several months to pick it up. I really liked the little nods to the original trilogy in this. The story is broken up into three separate parts. The first part being the backstory of the games, the second part being the actual games itself, and then the third part being the life after the games. I do think that the pacing was a bit strange in this. At times it was so so quick but then other times it was so incredibly slow it just didn't really even out. A lot of people really hate Snow and don't get me wrong I think he is a terrible human as well but I loved to hate him. I really like how we were introduced to many new characters in the Hunger Games trilogy but we also got some familiar faces as well. I thought Lucy Gray was a very interesting character. I was definitely rooting for her mostly to get away from Snow but still rooting for her. I am very curious if we're going to get more stories about some older characters because I know we are getting Hamish's story very soon but I would love to see a story about Tigress and how she became the character that we see in the trilogy. I just think that that would be very interesting. So Suzanne Collins, write Tigress's story please. I will eat that shit up. But overall, I did really enjoy this. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Next up, I read The Unfinished by Cheryl Isaacs and this is one that I gave 3.5 out of 5 stars. When out on a run in the woods, an indigenous teen named Avery discovers a black pool of water and she unknowingly awakens something sinister. I thought that Avery was a very relatable character, especially when it came to her anxiety about change. I did find her a little bit boring, especially when she would constantly be mentioning her best friend Key in literally every other sentence. I get that she was in love with him but it got very repetitive very quickly. I also thought that the pacing was a little bit off. Something very intense would happen and then Avery would have this super long monologue that didn't really make sense for that part of the story so it just became very difficult to become immersed into the story. I did really enjoy the parts of the story where Avery was seeing things that weren't actually there. I think that the descriptions and the visuals of those sections were really well done. So like I said there were parts of the story that I wasn't the biggest fan of but then there were parts that really shone for me so I gave it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. And then the final book that I'm going to talk about is Holly Horror The Longest Night. This is by Michelle Jabet Corpora and I give this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This is the second book in the Holly Horror duology which essentially follows Evie as she continues to try to uncover the secrets behind Hobby House. I enjoyed the first book. I believe that I gave that one a 3.5. This one I think was a very satisfying conclusion to the duology. This one takes place two weeks after the first book concludes and the first couple of pages does give a recap of what happened in the first book which I think was very helpful because I had honestly forgotten quite a bit. I really liked the setting of Ravenglass. I thought that it was a very spooky town that we got to learn a lot about. I also really liked that this took place around Christmas time. There is just something about a Christmas time spooky read that just hits different but I was not the biggest fan of the love triangle. I wish that it had been left out. I think that I would have enjoyed this book a lot more if that were the case. I did really enjoy the friendship between Tina and Evie though. I thought it was really well done. Overall I think it was fun. Do I think it was as good as the first book? No. I still think it was a fun time. I would recommend the duology as a whole to read around spooky October time. All right everybody those were the last eight books that I read for the month of October. Like I said, 
said, I read a total of 29 books in the month. So if you are interested in the first 10 or the other eight that I read for a total of 29, then check out the other videos up on my channel. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them. And I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye. Yeah.